there good morning welcome back to the channel and if you haven't subscribed this would be a good time to do that just hit the button then you'll know when we put a video up we try to put a video up a couple times a week started doing one a week and we switched it up to two a week I don't know uh, when there's no school Cameron's got lots of time to do a few videos I'm on my way today to go out and see a fellow that's planting tomatoes. The tomato crop is just about all in the ground. I think today's about the 16th of June. Pretty well everybody's done. They staged the planting because they don't harvest all the tomatoes. I guess my seatbelt's not on. Don't harvest all the tomatoes at the same time anyway. So they kind of staged the planting. And this will be his last tomatoes that he harvests. T typically the last tomatoes are the ones that get the biggest tons. Anyway, that's what we're doing here today. I guess I showed in a previous video how the tomatoes were planted with an automatic machine. Today, I'm going to uh, see a plug planter. That's the way probably 90% of the tomatoes are still planted with a plug planter. Used to be like two years ago, 100% was planted this way. And as those machines become available, probably that will become the norm because of all the labor problems that we've had. And especially this year was a bigger challenge than ever. Anyway, we'll get out there and see, see what's going on. I'm just going by that onion field that I videoed when they were planting onions and if you can see it, it looks really, really good. Those onions have come a long, long way in a couple of weeks or three or four weeks, whatever it was, three weeks I guess. Okay, I'm here today with Dave Sanika out here in uh, Chatham Township. Really nice sand, isn't it, Dave? Yes, it is. The ground conditions today are probably perfect. A little moisture, no misses, great crew. It's a good crew. Planter plants come from uh, cold maker. They're nice beauties. How long have you been growing tomatoes, Dave? Since 1978. So I don't know how many years that is. <laughs> I got to get the calculator. That's a long out. time. That's a long time. That's uh, right, right from hand pick. But it, tomatoes been in our family all ever since my granddad. I remember loading baskets with him on the truck and then take them into Libby's. So that was when I was a teenager back in the 60s. So it's been, we've been around in tomatoes a long time. A big thing that's changed, and I don't really want to get into numbers too much, is is yield has really changed, and I think it has a lot to do with varieties, don't you think? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Now, uh, the Sunbright and and the other processor out of Leamington, they they tend to move up with their varieties, newer varieties. Where in Dresden, we're still with the same varieties, but they're getting we're getting better better yields out of them all the time, but. We are still with the same variety that we were 10 years ago, but the yields are coming up. Whether it's whether it's a uh, what would you call it? cultural, the way we handle the ground now, uh, a fertilizer maybe, fertilizer, twin rows, twin rows. That's all you. Maybe your plants are closer together. I don't know. Like a lot of little things. Yep, a lot of little things. Maybe we'll go up and get a shot of these how this plug planter works. Sure, you can walk right on the catwalk up here. My main man Nick's up there, he'll tell you whatever you want to know. Hello Nick! Yeah, man. How's everybody today? Good, good. So what they're doing is they're grabbing plants out of these racks or... or trays. Trays, yes, trays. That was the word, Nick. Thanks. And you just drop them in into that wheel, and when the wheel goes around, it opens, eh, Dave? Yes, it opens up, and there's a kicker at the bottom. It drops, 
and then a kicker kicks it in, and then the ground comes around and fills it back in. A plug, how long a plug's been around? I remember they used to plant them with bare root plants. Coming out of Georgia, yeah. And this might be why the tomatoes are yielding yeah. better. Because back then when the tomatoes come out of Georgia, we'd have to sit in the barn and, and sort them all out. Throw the bad ones out. Throw the bad ones out, untangle the roots. And now this, this is just, this is awesome. It, 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 every plant is perfect. Yep. And even the germination, you see darn few empty, empty holes in the tray. Yeah, I think these went out at 285. Out of 288. Out of 288. I think, I don't know who counts them out there. Pete Fisk counts plants. You know Pete Fisk? Yep. There's, you can step right back in there and zoom right over I the top. went to school with Pete. He's still around. And I met him out at uh, the greenhouse the other day. So how many plants are you planting a minute here? 75. Way to go, Nick. You got that right on the tip of your tongue, didn't you? Well, that, that, that's my job. 75 times 2, 4, 6. That's a lot of plants in a day. Oh, yeah. We can plant as much as 150, 160,000 per day. But now, mind you, we're not like the new versions that are out there, but we do pretty good. We do pretty good. And you can only go as fast as the slowest planter. And this is all local help. Most of them from around Dresden. I think all of them from around Dresden. Yeah. So they all got their husbands all work in town or affiliated with somebody around Chatham Township. Except for him, he's out of London. So, so you're down staying at Grandma's house. Uh, yeah. And then we always have two following behind in case there's any misses. And then in case somebody's sick, we always got that extra little insurance with people. Well, it pays. And then, is anybody, you driving the tractor, Nick? Auto steer. That is slick. I noticed that I was out here yesterday and nobody in the tractor. Like, that's really good. Yeah, and you don't even have to worry. You know it's going to be good. Yeah. So you're putting uh, plant food on? Yep. Plant food just right into the water along with uh, an insecticide for the worms. Oh, that, uh, insects would be bad. Cutworms. Yep. Now the cutworms, because it's so hot out this last few days, the cutworms will migrate down yeah. deeper into the ground. But they've come out at night? Not so far, but we're using orthy. If they do, they're gonna they're gonna die. Yeah. You have to. Because boy, there's nothing worse than going up on top of a sand hill like this and, and nothing and nothing there and replant it. Because oh. then you get in inconsistency with the plant growth, your ethanol use. The maturity is just a nightmare. I think that the plants are, they're just going in perfect, aren't they? Oh, they are. You don't see a miss? No. Big difference if the ground conditions are right versus planting in the mud. Planting in the mud and then it, when the mud dries out and you got them little marble balls. And then... <laughs> <laughs> well, and the, and the trench gets all uh Well, it glazed. smears the trench yeah, smears. and they don't seal and it dries out and the roots got nowhere to go because it's just too tough. No, it's just a beautiful day for planting. Will you finish today? Yes. We're told to finish today because it's supposed to get hotter again. So they're looking forward to having pizza and a few pops and call it a day. Be done by two o'clock. Yep, I would think so. Pretty good crew. Like I said, I'm, I just got local help. Uh, I don't have housing anymore. I used to have housing used to have the Vietnamese and all that and out of that. So you use these guys to harvest too then? Yep, yep. Nick will run the harvester and people will be on there and 
a couple local guys are out dressing to haul them in. Well, it's nice to use some local help. It is. And I, I found some good ones, and they love the job, and, you know, they make a few extra bucks, and keeps me happy. It's steady on there, but it's really not hard work. No. Like yesterday, no. we were baling square bales of hay. Not as easy. No, I have yeah. a... I have a, a gardener that comes to my house and picks up tools. <laughs> he was, he was really, helping us yesterday. Yeah, he was really complaining. His arms are all scratched up. He says, I've never done that job before. He said, they can have that job. But anyways, I said, Karan, it's a job. I had two guys, three guys yesterday morning in short pants. And I'm anti-short pants at work anyway. Like, if you're going to come to work, put your long pants on, put the big boy pants on. Yep. Shorts are okay if you're going to play in the sandbox. <laughs> but if it, you're coming out to do real work, get the long pants get on. The long pants on. Anyway, they didn't get along very good doing hay in short no. pants. No, you would. Yeah. Well, Dave, this has been good to come and see how it's done. Yep. It, like, you know, like you had mentioned, this that planter is current right now at a, about 90 for 95 percent of the planters are plug what planters. we're using plug yeah. but next year it could be only 90 85 is going to continually drop well, one thing uh in in anybody that viewed our videos if they caught it the company that makes those automatic planters in belgium sold out for next year already no, I don't know where all they go, but there's a lot of things that get planted, like transplanted, like peppers, tomatoes, onions, oh, yes. you know, uh, even hemp. They transplant hemp, tobacco. So those planters are going to plant a lot of different they things. They will. Rumor has it RJ in Blenheim is going to, that has 90% of these. Yeah. These. Uh, it's going to start. Going to start manufacturing also. So that'll be good. It'll be good for if you need parts, you just drive to Blenheim. And you know, some, call somebody Belgium. local. Yep. And maybe Belgium can make some parts and work. Hopefully they're working together. I don't know. Well, hopefully they are too. But, you know, as yourself, like you've been in the bean business, the transition of from manual labor to high tech stuff. It's got to change. It's got to change. And it's going to change. So, anyways. Well, that's good, Dave. Yep. Thanks Appreciate for taking the time to come out. It Appreciate is a beautiful day. It is. I also want to thank the good folks at here in Tractor for sponsoring <laughs> our hats today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can get a, a windbreaker out of them or something. Boy, a coat would really yeah. be nice for this fall. <laughs> like we're going to need a coat this fall. I know. Like a I nice know. big H here in Tractor yeah. coat. Yep. Wouldn't it? we look good in that? We would. Yeah. So. Maybe you can uh, talk to the right yeah, people. I, I, I might know a few guys up there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Thanks if you've uh, watched this video. Thanks for watching. Keep watching. And uh, send your comments in. Somebody sent a comment in about uh, wanting to see tomatoes being planted. And uh, that's why I'm out here today. I talked to Dave. As soon as that comment come, I said, Dave, somebody wants to see. There they are. There's the plug plants. Yep. Somebody wanted to see tomatoes planted. And uh, I try to... Uh, fulfill everybody's comments if I can, if they're reasonable. Anyway, thanks for tuning in.